Now, this could be, I was about to say, it could be the Kirby or the, the Kirby versus Peach. I don't think it will be. That is a, feels like a matchup that is, uh, That's, what's the opposite of fun? Uh, unfun. Kirby Peach. I feel like Kirby <laughs> Peach is just Kirby Peach. Yeah, um, that doesn't sound so very good. So instead, we're going to be having these Donuts, two characters. The yeah, uh, man, can you imagine if Toon Link had good bombs that he could pull occasionally? I mean, no, his bombs are solid. His bombs are, his bombs are arguably, uh, are way better than uh, Young Link's. And they're different from Adult Link's bombs. His doesn't count. <laughs> Ooh, just a forward yeah. tilt, though. I, I kind of want to see an up tilt there, at the, especially at these low-ish percents. Like, you can combo up tilt, up, up tilt multiple times over as it combos into itself at lower percents, but... Ooh. Goober just trying to set up a zone here, but is instead trying to focus... On, uh, uh, unable to really do so thanks to player fours, again, like just really solid spacing starting off of these games, but in a different way than it was against Skeet earlier. Yeah, I'm, this is a set that is going to involve so much item play. Yes. Both these characters, it's central to their game plan, and also they confirm off of it. Uh, Toon Link, though, can confirm into actual kills from his projectile, which is something that Peach can't really do with her turnips. But uh, regardless, I feel like part of the matchup is going to be very interesting to see how they will uh, sort of deal with when their opponent is holding shields with an item in hand. Yeah, it'll take a fair bit of offense to go, but oh, missing that back air on the neutral getup that could have been uh, could have been the one either way, forcing Goober to retreat back to the corner before landing that forward air. Uh, player four off to a solid start here, taking their time. Still like two minutes, almost two minutes off the clock, and only one stock gone. You know that means player four is playing with a with plenty of patience to go around and not trying to risk any. Uh, any errant approach and get hit with something like a bomb fair. Oh, the quick though. I was actually going to say that that's that grab, that tether grab specifically, can actually be a decent answer to Peach's spacing. It just covers so much ground if she is going to be landing. And at the ledge like that, it is a potent back throw kill throw. So I feel like it's something that. The thing is that because only the back throw sort of variation kills. Player 4 can play around that by just making sure he doesn't get grabbed while Goober is in the corner. Ooh, interesting use of the counter there, trying to find a, any sort of means to counteract some of these uh, re, uh, getting back to stage projectiles. The turnip eats the bomb alive, but the arrow is able to stop the second turnip, but a jump from ledge gets stuffed out by a huge forward air. Player 4 some, still cementing that lead in turn as, we, as these two battle it out for fourth place. Oh. And to whenever you see a tomahawk grab, that's when Player 4 is really recognizing and reading the opponent. They are scared, and he is going to make them even more terrified. And I love that. That time he doesn't land for the grab, and instead stays at that perfect height and down airs, catches the dropping shield. Oh, trying to go for the re-grab there, too. Player 4 really on something right now. Uh, just finding so many means of offense. And uh, a whiff grab is going to be a huge opportunity for a down air. There are some of those up tilts. You need to prevent it. Peach from floating in your airspace. Things like up tilt, up airs, uh, especially since uh, uh, Toon Link's up air is extremely active. Or just clever use of these bombs can do all of that in spades. Look at this ledge trapping. Just, like, you're not even allowed to grab the ledge. I mean, okay, there it is, though. The thing is, like, oh, you can hit Peach with all the projectiles you want, but if you don't kill her at the end of it, that, I mean, it's cute that you hit her with seven bombs, but if she comes back to stage and hits you with a, another 40-50% combo, like... Uh. And that's where the importance of Toon Link's bombs uh, is so imperative, and they're set not oh, good. I'm honk. throwing something. Where's the honk? Give me the honk. Honk, please. Oh. Honk. honk if you love... <laughs> Share if you play. <laughs> Oh, no back air. I was kind of just expecting the added pressure, but that was, again, up tilt. There you go. Finally transitioning into how do I stop player four from just daring on my shield, like tiptoeing. I'll start to throw it around those moves. It is worth knowing that player four has actually gone for, instead of going for a guaranteed punish, I can do it not quite yet. I will finish my thought whether once he uh, makes it back to the stage here, makes it out of the corner. All right, we are we are back uh -huh. in business. Now, hold on. Great mash. Wait. Yeah, ping pong back and forth with so many of these just back airs and forward airs across the stage. Great use of the Zare, though, to find their way down. Uh, we're starting to look at uh, per kill percents for things like dash attack kill. as well. Forward throw won't do it. 
Maybe back throw would have, but... Catches the bomb! Can Peach combo off of a uh, Tumic Bomb? It's set knockback, so I don't see why not. Hmm. All right, and there it is, the booty. Um, but I was just going to say that, for, especially for those, like, mid or mid to higher percents, um, when Goober was at 70, 80 percent, like, he, player four got his shield dash attacked, and instead right. of going for the instant, like, neutral air, he tried to set up for a much harder punish. You know, he's looking to maximize those openings, not necessarily get the tiny little, ooh, yeah, no, you messed up, let me just nick you with a neutral air, and then maybe get something out of you being in the corner. No, he is out, kind of out for blood, really trying to maximize openings. Yeah, it's, as a player that, as a trap-based player, as Toon Lake is, you need to optimize that idea. Because while playing the super, like, jump back, fade away, like, being able to pull a bunch of bombs, throw out Boomerang, a floaty arrow, like, all that's gonna consume a lot of space, but the real money makers are exactly forward air and up air. And finding your ways into those is Toon Link's entire win condition. Starting off with a strong 60 is a way to kind of establish that you still have that flow going. It just is a matter of can you out damage Peach? And can you out kill Peach? Because Peach is always going to be able to keep up with you in damage. Very nice with the up tilts. Again, big fan of these up tilts. They're a big fan of Toon Link's tilts in general. They are unbelievably quick. And, and down tilts are eh. Okay, we don't fuck. <laughs> <laughs> A forward tilt is both a forward and a That's down true, tilt. That's true, yes. <laughs> one, thing, one thing we're seeing a lot more of is Zare, and I really like... Oh, no, not Zare like that. Oh. Another, okay, oh, good. Another one. Okay. He misses the timing on the third one. Catches him dropping shield. He lands with it, puts it up for only a second, and now he's the one trapped in the corner. How is Goober going to get out of there? This Peach Pressure Player 4, finally that reversal. Let's see if Goober can maybe confirm into a kill right now. No, Player 4 is just being perfectly evasive enough that the final blow is not being dealt. As I say that, bomb into fair. From off stage like that, a kind of a risky gambit, especially if Player 4 decided to challenge there. The Toad gets eaten alive, and that quick upbeat out of shield, the spin attack turning into so much 50% here. And it just comes back to one singular thought. So you remember earlier where uh, Player 4 found a roll read and was able to get like a back air off of it, right? That could have been an up smash instead. And he didn't do it. He went for the safe play. And now he's down by a lot. You got to wonder about like if you find ways to pull, those, pull that trigger, can you find, uh, would you have been in a big lead? You can't worry about that now, but it is in a... It's something to evoke that something, and maybe something that Goober can take advantage of. While Player 4 has been an amazing job of kind of playing a steady neutral, maybe he lacks that X factor that could really bring back big leads. Player 4 has gotten like literally three of those grabs yeah, just to back, back there. Yeah, like, yeah, but yeah. specifically, Goober kind of jumping over him and then catching the landing with the grab. That happened like three times in a row. And then Goober made a nice adjustment of just going for a grab while he was in the corner. Right. You know, you can only get, it doesn't work four times in a row. <laughs> oh, and a really nice adjustment there as well. Seeing the, uh, seeing the empty flow and expect, uh, playing around the grab. Okay, I, <gasps> it's like I had the same thought, Goober, don't you worry. <laughs> oh, I think that was a stitch face. Oh, there, finally that up smash working. Seeing player four drop the float and that was his time to go in and strike. Clean recognition on the part of Goober as they hold on to this stock for the moment and they, the early upbeat gets them by too. No. Oh. Man, they're, now they're just swinging at each other. This is not the sort of, I felt like earlier on they were, okay, let me carefully space and pick my moments really. But no, now they're just throwing it out here and just barely outspacing. Feels like player four is doing a little better, but oh, the reads and oh, okay. Nary. We, yeah, Nary straight out of that scramble, the boomerang breaking the grab. I feel like he should be able to combo off of that boomerang, right? He should have, yeah. Just, yeah. But you're prepping DI instead and each Nair is pretty quick. Yeah. Oh, speaking of pretty quick moves, that dash that came in, the tech chase as well, down throw back air, back air, couple, couple of big swings and big punishes, 
bringing it up to 50%, and the active head tilt in the ca in the uh, in the player cam makes me wonder if that down smash was intended. Still have to be concerned about the ledge play here and getting out of the corner. I love that attempt at a down air, but even better counter play from Goober. Not only punishing with an up smash, but also outspacing multiple of the options. Ooh. The callouts are all there. Another up smash. It's still not enough to finish. It's somehow player four hell. is just <laughs> al he's alive, but by a thread. 140. At the same time, sometimes it can be difficult. Never mind. He finds the grab. No, it still doesn't kill. If he pummels a little bit, maybe. But this is player four with so much rage on his body. Even Jab's not going to do it. He just keeps living and living and living. When is it going to stop? The answer. Oh, that Nair could have taken the stock and instead outspaces the grab. Max Rage Peach, 178 against a 98 Toon Link. It gets dangerous and da even more dangerous with each passing second, but the roll is caught by the well-placed forward tilt because it's not just a forward tilt. It's not just a down tilt. It's also an up tilt. It's also a back tilt. <laughs> it's also a back it's a It's a nair tilt. <laughs> <laughs> Neutral tilt move. Look at this. Look, like, just for reference, right? Yeah, he was right? actually behind him, I like think. Like, he rolls. Bit. Okay. The forward tilt hits. He literally hit him behind him. Like the forward tilt activity starts here and it lands here. <laughs> like that, Three, yes. Two, <laughs> one, go. Skin change. Ah, uh, doesn't want to blend into the background, I guess. He doesn't need to. Do oh, we know he does because the background is dark blue, not the stage. Very smart. Knows the color scheme of this bet of the, the better than I do. Very smart. <laughs> the, Very smart. It's just really selling it. That was so good. That, that, that was yeah. Uh, <laughs> every decision is every, well thought out and calculated. Is calculated. That's how what I assume. These are the listen. These guys are in top four. All right. That Very that smart. must mean they must they are completely flawless here at the Xeno Arcadian. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Goober sitting at a nice percent, but snatched away from him, and now 97 at the ledge. We've seen how forward air is probably what he's looking for. Player 4 doesn't quite find it. Instead, resetting with another neutral air, just keeping Goober in the corner. I, well, okay, fine. Uh, Everybody's... That was... They just stood back to back for a second like they were in an action movie. Yeah, I mean, just playing, playing the, uh, playing the James boys. Bond card. I like the taking of that hit. It's like, oh, I misspaced my upbeat. I'll take the hit of this boomerang, so that way I can reset my spacing, reset my upbeat, get back to stage, get back, no worries, no problem, and a back air close the stop. What? He used the smoke screen of the bomb. I don't even know how he got behind him. <laughs> he spot dodged. He spot dodged within the smoke, that visual noise coming into play and intercepting uh, player four's attempt at aggression from the corner. Super clean stuff. That wasn't just noise, that was an obfuscation. <laughs> yeah, that's what visual noise means. I thought visual noise is like when things can become cluttered. Yeah, but I mean, this, you couldn't but see. But he was covered. Yeah. Physically, is noise when things are covered or when it's like overlaid on top of? That's what I always thought it was I've, noise. We can debate semantics a little later. No, we can debate <laughs> semantics right now. Uh, no, okay. Yeah. <laughs> then you're wrong. <laughs> Hold that. All right, there we go. I accept defeat because we do need to get back to this game. It's even as heck right now. Honestly, the last two games in particular have just been so close. And now I, I trapped the corner. People, I feel like people aren't dying in the corner like we, we used to, you know? They're yeah, just surviving, managing to get out, get their own combo started. When are people just exploding at 80? I think it's a man it's management of not only what hits you know you can't take, but what hits you know you can. And that's why player four just trying to go for a little bit of an extra sauce on that read. Ooh. Oh, but again, the early uppy gets by the counter attempt from player four, who sees checkmate, and Goober says, no, 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 there's still plenty of moves to play here. Setting up for the corner themselves, attempting to swing with that forward tilt, which can also hit ledge. Literally moves does it all. But oh. So does that Peach Fair. It's so good at catching exactly that position, and player four is sitting with plenty of damage and forced to commit now is Goober to take the stock. Bombs won't do it by itself. He needs to put himself at risk too. 
Yeah, I was going to say the grab might be on the table, but Player 4 is so aware of it, spacing just outside of that range. His shield, though, so tiny. I don't know why he went for that grab. I guess he was expecting a YOLO approach from Player 4. Yeah, he has to forward throw. Back throw is not going to do it with that kind of stage position. I wonder if up throw would have. Up throw kills him very late. I don't think up throw would have done I it. mean, like, Lynx isn't that bad. I guess it's Toon Link. Toon Link has a, is his Toon Link's a small is, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. Oh, okay. Sees the clash with the uh, with Peach back air and his own uh, and his own retoss. And it's like, all right, time to just swing straight through this. See what I can do, and it works out like a charm. Damage is all consistently proven to never been a factor in a lead in this set. Both players are finding many means to prolong their own stocks and put on plenty of damage. It's just a matter of can player four take this stock in a timely matter, or will the reversals from Goober turn this game back on its head? He's been using that upbeat to catch landing so many times. It doesn't necessarily lead into that much, but it's solid damage outright. And, oh, that might have been possibly a big opening, but yeah, without his resources, he was forced to go to the ledge. 114%. Wow, love that Zare. What is high Zare intercepting another attempt at an edge guard from player four, finding the grab on the dash back to the power of tether grabs, reading the jump in and getting a huge up air. And that is exactly what I was talking about earlier, Salty, where you saw the damage start to rack up. You knew the, the pressure was suddenly back onto player four to try and close out that game. And he got a little antsy. Yeah, and also, Peach's double jump is so slow. That, that's and that's so really why it got caught right there. I mean, imagine if that was Sora. Sora would already be in the stratosphere, miles away from that up there. But no, Peach, you know, kind of the price of having such a strong float is that double jump just takes a while and it doesn't really go very far. Yeah. <laughs> Still running it straight back as player four, trying to bring this to a game five, but falling Again, straight. Catching? Yeah, yeah the that, that's so good at catching the landing. I feel like the reason why he's been going for that is that maybe player four has been ambiguous with his whether he's going in front or behind, and then he doesn't have to care if he goes for up B. But you saw right there immediately player four going for a like a down air right at the tip of his head because he was like, I'm not gonna get caught by that up B again. I know how to counterplay it. There's always an answer that Peach has. Double back arrow evens this game up so hard. Oh, arrow into forward smash. Interesting kind of setup there. I wonder if they were looking for perhaps a spot dodge, but player four finds a down smash on their own. Sitting at once again the corner. Wow. I get, the power of item play is so... It, it cannot be understated in um, Smash Ultimate as a whole because being able to have repeatedly preparable... Uh, being able to prep and... Choose when you want to throw these projectiles, even in such a small space, is so powerful to the point where player four said, Screw the ledge trapping, I'm not gonna let you pull the items that you have been doing off stage. Going deep for that edge guard. This is the same position we've seen Goober in before. He needs to find a way to close out the stock, doing some fancy little tricks with recatching the bomb, but it doesn't matter if player four is not letting any of them actually connect. And okay, mm, just floating out that height for a little bit too long. Uber managing to get hit after hit, and, and it seems like player four is yet to touch him even once. Yeah, just a mass with so much coverage. Good counter, uh, good recognition there on player four drifting back towards the corner to avoid the incoming up air. We have seen the payoff for some of player four's like drifting, which it's been very much focused on. I'm not getting hit by forward air pay off in the sense of not only is he not getting hit by forward air, it also seems like Goober has lost confidence in going for forward air to reliably kill. Yes, wow. the up throw didn't kill yeah, even I'm, the Jeez. <laughs> didn't even really come close to kill. Yeah, yeah, not not even sparks, like no no nothing. Back air. I love that. Just floating out there, waiting for the hitbox to totally finish. Not going to get caught because he's getting antsy. Definitely played before. Still feeling like he's in control of his emotions. Yeah, just total, total control of this game, even. The bouncing back and forth, uh, utilizing Peach's uh, float airspeed to constantly throw off Goober. Oh, not dead! 207! And Peach has got, she's got plenty of, uh... She eats her greens. Yeah, she's, she's strong enough out here. She's taking these hits like a champ. And 
dealing them out just as harshly. Another strong edge guard to seal out a stock. Oh, I wanted a counter there. I really, truly did. But it looks like player four was just trying to attack straight above that up B. Still plenty of room for plenty of room for Goober to start finding a lot of chaining hits together and gain some momentum, but it feels like player four like has built his game plan in this game four to stuff out momentum exactly and turn it into stock losses. Player four taking game four and making us lead, uh, leading us to another game five situation. How many game fives have we had so far in Let's top count. It's, uh, I feel like these have been getting close and close. So oh. we saw Maniac Mailman, which was our first game five. Then Helper got Ooh. a 3-0 on player four. Then we did down to losers and saw Goober 3 Two over Mailman, mm -hmm. uh, and then now we have another game five. Yeah, so three, three of them. Thanks. Um, that's fine. It feels like there has been more. Yeah. Well, I feel like these best three sets have been expansive. You know what I mean? Like there's so much that happens in them. Yes, I can agree with there's, that. There's, I mean, like think about the even just the narrative of going back and forth here. <laughs> <laughs> I see your little fingerings. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. Uh, but uh, anyway, moving, this is game five, down to the wire. No more chance to uh, just make mistakes. And oh, I understand the idea behind that. But maybe just getting back to ledge is fine. I, I, I mean, I respect it, right? Yeah. Like, game four was such a deconstruction of your previous play style that it feels like you want to start shaking things up early in the part of game five. At the very least, just to gain some momentum early, and so far it's been acceptable in terms of the outcome. The second hit of dash attack will kind of throw off your early zoning. Yeah. I also I love the way that it's subtle, but Goober will jump in order to bring his. He is dead. Yeah. That was such good turn it placement. The quick fast fall, then immediate float to that, throw it oh. just where you want it. So good from player four. Ouch. Yeah, and also, smart from player four, he's not going for... Oh, wow, he's dead. Um, he's not going for the directional air dodges. Uh, he's going for the neutral ones that he can recover from even, even quicker. And because a lot of people, we saw them earlier on, they would go directional air dodge when they were close to the top, and the other player would still have time to kill them on the way down because of how laggy it is. Yeah, it's... Instead, he, he's being much more flexible, and especially given Peach's uh, floaty air dodge being so having so much end lag, you can you can really see the, uh, player four working around that, uh, working around it like it's not even there. Another big back air though closes out and sets up another ledge trap. Another jump gets caught by that turn up, and he goes for the jump again. Hey, you know, sometimes they don't expect the the no mix up mix up. Great get up attack as well, shutting down any shutting down the excess movement that player four was doing. It's like you have to commit to a direction here. Oh, and commit to a direction he did, but turning double backing, doubling back on it immediately with that side be super nice stuff from player four. Oh. That turn up in hand is so scary at these lower percents. Uber still having the bravery of rolling into him gets a lot of damage off of the eventual conversion. But okay, I, I did want to mention uh, one of the really cool things that I see Uber doing is he throws out the boomerang and then he jumps so that when the boomerang returns, it kind of covers if the opponent were to jump out of shield and then he punishes so the, the dropping shield running option. It's very like the subtle control of those projectiles is how he's been able to shut down so many people's movements that brought him here to top four in the first place. But player four is just so aware and his movement is keen on another level and Goober just is not able to wall him out like how he wants to. Yeah, forced to rely on Zare a ton, but able to find that grab in order to give themselves an opportunity here. We've seen this happen a couple of times over. The Winky Face is going to result in a, some solid damage, though Nair being put off stage. Finally, the ability to pull a bomb, but how often can... Ooh, pretty often, in fact. How often can Goober set up more and more damage situations? Thanks, Mailman, for the follow. Good job today. 
I saw we it saw, too. We saw it. We saw you. Oh, you get cut. Ooh, 150 and oh, but the interception with the bomb Ooh. while also catching. 80% max rage. Hold on a second. That town and city high blast zone helping out player four just a little bit. 150. This is so dangerous. Oh, my God. Hold on a second. We are in a last hit situation. Another bomb hitting. It's damage, but it's not a kill just yet. The question is whether player four can get back to being in control. That up smash. So hungry for it. And the back air. It doesn't matter how hard he tried. We have the pop off from player four. He's the one who's going to be moving on into losers finals. Yeah, and that, that one felt like it was a genuine pop off. No, like, jokes in early rounds. No whatever it was with Skeet. Like, just a genuine solidly finishing off that set that got closer and closer with every passing second and man after such a strong final stock showing goober cashed out too early he's like all right you're gonna roll here i'm gonna throw out this up smash this game will be over i'll be moving on to losers finals just like this i do want to mention the what was it game two game three it was that